Eddie. So now, as you can see, I'm already on my YouTube channel. Everyone who has a Gmail account will have access to YouTube through your channel. Uh, and then you will be able to see and search for videos. When we are talking about level one certified, you need to learn how to search for videos and how to narrow those searches. So again, super easy. We go to the search button. And the first thing that I'm going to do today is to look for a, any video. In this case, I'm going to look for volcanoes. When I type a video, you guys will see, and probably you are so used to it, to search for videos, that you will be able to find multiple videos. Now, something that you may use or may not use is the filter. Filter is something that you guys need to learn and master to become a level one certified. So when you're doing a filter, when I click there, they ask you what kind of filter would you like to put to find the video specific that you're looking for. So you can do it by date. Um, Joe yesterday have a great example. Like if you're looking for something, uh, big news that came up in the last uh, month, hour, week, like the COVID-19, it's something that maybe we can be able to filter through this uh, spa. You can also filter by uh, the type. So you guys may be able to use uh, videos but remember what I just say, everybody who has a YouTube, um, sorry, a Google account will be able to have a channel and then a playlist. You can also find movies and shows. So that's based on the type. Also as educators, it's not recommended to have very long videos when we are searching for videos. So that may be something that you also need to take in consideration when you are uh, applying a filter. If by any case, any task that you need to complete at any point in your life, they ask you for duration, this is where you will find it. You will also find it by features. There are certain features that they've been added to YouTube lately, like the 360 and the VR 180. That's um, relatively new in the uh, last few years. So very good. What am I going to do is I'm going to apply a duration filter right here to find a movie that is suitable for me. So that's the first thing that I wanna show you. Now I find like volcanoes. You can be more specific if you have the specific title of uh, a movie, you can type it right there and that's a way to search it. I wanna point out that on your left, you have a menu where you will be able to find different things that are gonna be walking you through this um, these, uh, PD. Then we also have like the waffle. Remember that any you any Google product has access to the waffle. And do not forget that all the Google products are interactive. That means that you can use it in between. So you can use YouTube maybe uh, combined with any other form or Google products. Then again, every time you see a bell, you're gonna find notifications. That's where you're gonna find your notifications. At this point, we are not going into the create button since that is not a skill that you guys are going to be needed for level one certification. All right, so after I apply my filter, I find the movies here. Every time you find three dots next to something in Google, that means that I actually can do something to that particular item. In this case, it's giving me specific uh, options like added to a queue. A queue is kind of like a quick playlist that you can play later. Um, you can save it for later, but then we're gonna focus right now into save to playlist. So save to playlist, is one of the skills that needs to be mastered. As you can see, I already have different um, lists right here uh, that I have created on the past. And as you can see, they have different symbols. We're going to go through those in a little bit. So I either can save it to a pre-made list that I have. Remember, this is one of the tasks that maybe you need to be required to become a level one certified. So what I do is I'm going to create a new list. So I'm gonna go to the plus all the way to the bottom. Like I say, I already have created lists. You may have none. So maybe that's the first button that you're actually gonna be able to find. 
All right, my screen is freezing a little bit here. Okay, I got it now. All right, so what I do, the first thing that they ask you is enter the name of the playlist. If you are creating different playlists for your different subjects, for your different units, for your different classrooms, you can do whatever playlist that you want, and you can name it again whatever you want that is appropriate for uh, education. So in this case, I'm going to create a list called types of volcanoes. Okay, then here is where I see how do I want to publish that playlist? Even though I'm not created of the videos and I'm creating a playlist, it's kind of like putting them all together in a CD or something like that, referring to uh, our old times. Um, so we can make that public, meaning that anybody who's searching for type of volcanoes can actually find our playlist. If you guys don't mind to please uh, turn off your microphones at this time, that would be fantastic. Thank you. Then you can also um, make that list unlisted. And unlisted means that only people who you give the link to will be able to find that playlist. So it's not going to be public for everybody to find. And then private, as you can see it here, says only you can view it. So it's not like I say, oh, it's private, and I, then I'm going to share my link with Joe. If I do that, it's, he won't be able to see it. It's only for me. So that's the reason um, you, you need to differentiate between the playlists. Again, my screen is freezing right here, you guys. So bear with me for a second. Perfect. Okay. So again, types of volcano, and then I'm going to create my list. All right, when I created my list, this movie was added to my list. So I can go to different, uh, actually different movies and you can continue adding them to your playlist. So I go to save to playlist, then I'm gonna search for the uh, types of volcanoes. I'm gonna put it right there and then immediately it's going to save it to my types of volcanoes. You can save a video to multiple playlists. So let's say that I want to save it to types of volcanoes, but I also have another playlist called science. So I actually can do that. I can save it to my science uh, playlist. So that's something else that I can do. Bear with me, you guys. Again, I don't know why my screen is freezing right here. So now, now that I save all my playlists, I can actually manage those playlists. So what I what you see here, I always refer in Google, you always find either the uh, waffle or you find the hamburger. So when I, I go to the hamburger, I'm going to see all the things that I can manage on my YouTube channel. I have my home that when I click to my home, it's going to take me exactly where all the things that I have searched before, maybe things that are recommended for me are safe. And then um, something that you can do again, every time you see three dots, it means that you can modify the item. So what I do here, for example, is like, you know what? I do not want to get uh, recommendations from this channel. I don't want it to be showing on my screen when I open up in my class for my students. So I say I either not interested or I don't recommend this channel for me. So in that case, it will go away from your list. So that's a way to remove like videos from your screen. We are going to be back to playlists in a little in, in a second. Then you're going to find again videos that are trending. I'm going to go back to subscriptions and here you will see the history of things that you have seen. And you can also see your playlist right here on the left. So that's another way where you can find the playlist that you actually have modified um, or added to your YouTube channel. So when you click on those, let me find my types of volcanoes, you will see that it's going to take you to the page where the playlist is. Another task that is important for you guys to master at this point is how to modify a playlist. 
how I can add more videos, how I can change the names, how um, different kind of things, how to share it, shuffle, etc. So every time again that I see a pencil, that's the way that you guys going to be able to modify the name of a playlist. So instead of naming types of volcanoes, I will say volcanoes for kids. So I need to go to my pencil and then I will name it volcanoes for kids. So that's a way for me to modify the name of my playlist. Important for you guys to know how to create a playlist and how to modify. So that's the reason we are showing you this today. All right, so when we go to the bottom of this playlist, uh, the uh, icon that it will be showing is the first movie that I actually save it to that playlist. That will be like the icon um, or picture that will be referred to that playlist. Then again, here I can change the privacy of my playlist. If I decide, you know what, I don't want to make it public. I want to make it unlisted. That's a way to do it. You can change it right here. These three different items on the bottom, the arrows across means that you can shuffle the playlist if you want them to let go in different order. The arrow is important because another uh, important skill that you uh, may need to learn at this point is how to share a playlist. So in this case, when I need to share my playlist, that will be the way to do it with my arrow of sharing. When I click right there, it gives me different options. The most common option to share a playlist is by copying the link. So I can actually click right here, click on copy, and now my playlist will be able to be shared. If I grab that copy URL and I play and I put it on a different tab, that playlist will be showing right there. Perfect. Also, if I go and I type an email, I can also be able to share my um, uh, my uh, playlist that way. All right, remember that every time we see three dots, it means that it's something that I can do to modify that item. In this case, if I need to add another video to my YouTube playlist, this is another way to do it. I can come right here and add a list to my playlist. Something else important to remember is um, this collaborate um, tab. When I click on it, it will allow you to add people to collaborate. It kind of works like the other products that Google has uh, in the sense of um, we are able to collaborate. We are able to collaborate in a Google slide. We are able to collaborate in a document. We are also able to collaborate. So if I'm creating my science playlist or my volcano playlist, um, and I needed to share it with my team members at my school, for example, I, I will be able to copy this link, send it to Joe, if he is a part of my team, and he will be able to modify and add to this playlist. Joe, is any questions so far? Yeah, um, real quick, can you just show again how to, um, while you're on the screen, can you show how to share a playlist again? Absolutely. That will be for a small price, just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> so when I'm here, remember that we are in the playlist page. How I access my playlist was I, through my uh, hamburger. Now, remember what I just said before. There are multiple ways to access everything through Google. So that's something to remember. So my playlists are here on the side. As you can see, I have my, bot, my home button and all that. And then my playlists are right here. When I click on my playlist, it's going to take me to this page. In this page, I have this arrow right here on the bottom that says share. So this arrow is the one that I'm going to click to be able to share the link. So the link is right there for me to copy it and be able to share it via email, via Google Classroom, via, um, I don't know, even a text message probably. So there are multiple ways actually to share your playlist. Very good question. Thank uh, you, Joe. So now we have one more thing. and. 
uh, just because it's popping up quite a bit. The for people that cannot see like uh, create a playlist or add to a playlist. Um, that's just because your channel has not been set up. So in a minute, Natalia is going to show um, that portion. Now, Natalia and I have already set up our YouTube channel, and it's not something that we can go back and undo. So we can't show you that initial step. However, Natalia, in, again, in a minute, will show you um, where that my channel is on YouTube mm -hmm. and you know how to get to it and then how you can customize your channel. Perfect. Yes. Thank you. Thank you for actually that. Also, something that I forget to tell you guys is like when I'm presenting, um, if you want a better view of the presentation, you need to go to the three dots here on the bottom. And then you actually are going to go to change layout and you need to make sure that you have it on the spotlight. So when you have it on the spotlight, it's going to be uh, for you guys to be able to see my presentation way, way better. So sorry that I didn't mention that before as well. Alrighty. So um, here also you will be able to find the description button. Uh, it's not something that is necessary. However, you, it's something that you need to learn how to do. It's kind of like, you know, like you learn to read and write and you're not going to become a writer, but you're still going to need to use those skills at some point. So here on my description, I can say, um, this playlist is for uh, usage and science classroom, whatever you want. Again, it's not something that is necessary, but something that maybe can be handy to you at some point. So if you need to add a description, this is the part where you're going to uh, see it. Remember that every time we do a change, you need to make sure that you save it. If you do not save it, those changes won't stay. So just to make sure. All right, something else that I want to show you uh, from playlists is like how to move the videos on my playlist. So on the top, you can see that you can actually sort them by date added, by most popular, by published, whatever. Like if you're creating a playlist through the year with your students, for example, and then um you decide that you need to have the most recent um video at the top that's how you will do it however again there are multiple ways with google google goes around a way to do it will be grabbing my lines click hold and move it up as you can see here it's telling you who added to this playlist why because remember that i turned on the collaboration button so when i share this playlist for example with joe he will be able to also able to add and modify this playlist so something to keep in mind all right so now that i have my playlist set up i can actually come back to um sorry go back to my home button right here apologies for that and then something that we can do is like when you see this picture right here, this is your profile picture, but that's the picture that is going to take you to something uh, like to manage your channel, okay, and to manage your studio. Now, I'm going to walk you through the channel just because you need to create your channel if you have never used it before. Uh, but you will need to create movies at this time for to become a level one certified. So just to keep in mind, um, that is something that you are not going to need. So I have my channel and I have your YouTube studio. So remember when at the beginning, and I keep saying it, there are multiple ways to access everything. So I went to my picture again, and from my picture, I went to... Um, my studio. Now it's not showing because obviously I'm already on my studio. So what I have here on my studio is kind of like my general information, the information about my channel. Because I use my channel often, I create videos, I make the stuff, um, I'm able to see some analytics of my own videos that I created, I can see uh, comments and stuff like that. But may not be something that you will need at this point um like the information but at least you know where you will find that information on your youtube channel um 
I'm gonna go, I mean the dashboard, then you can have videos. So these are all the videos that I have produced again. This is not necessary for you because you haven't produced, or if you have, you won't need it for uh, a level one certification. Then you also have the playlist here. So this is when I was telling you that all the ways go to Rome. So you will be able to find different ways to access to playlists. So my recommendation to you when you are doing specific tasks for anything is do not panic. Just think for a second. See that, remember, always take you to Rome. I don't know if that's a saying in English, but at least we have it in Spanish. So here I have my playlist, and here I can see the different videos that I have in each of my different playlists. So you can see here, I have this little link, and the link is telling me that that playlist is unlisted, while the other ones may be public playlists, playlists that anybody can access like if they find if they are looking for school videos they may be able to find these videos and that's how you do it so again i can actually click right here this is another way to go to your playlist and modify and change exactly the same thing that i just explained it to you so the same thing just a different route okay again i told you about sort and drive i told you about the shuffle collaborate and share um anything else joe that is popping up on the questions um not yet i'm going to circle back to a few questions um but no i think the main thing that you touched on i mean is just really focus on those um adding videos to a playlist and then just knowing how to share those playlists out um and then uh, yes like everyone like natalia said uh just go to that channel um and the first time you'll just have to create your channel create channel however you do not know you don't need to create videos for level one. You're not creating videos. What you're doing is you're searching for videos to add it to your playlist. So at this point, for um, becoming a level one, you don't really need to uh, create videos. Joe and I, we are level one, level two, and certified Google uh, trainers. And I believe that, um, is not part of the training center. So that's something that you need to remember. You do not need to create, you just need to learn how to create playlists, no videos. All right, something else that I wanna to touch right here that is also very important to know and learn to become a level one certified is how do you manage your subscriptions? So subscription is kind of like when, um, I'm referring again to the old times like when I was a child, I remember like my mom used to subscribe to magazines. And then when you subscribe here, you don't have to pay. At that time you pay for the magazines and every month you get a magazine. So this has kind of like the same thinking in the sense that you subscribe to specific channels. So those channels are channels that have create content that is interested to you. So for example, you can look for a specific channel. Um, like I'm going to search for Racine Unified School District and I have it right here. So I noticed that this is the channel because it has a huge amount of videos, not huge, but a, a, a big amount of videos. That's what I mean. And then you can see down here that these other ones are videos that are related to that channel. To be able to subscribe, the only thing that I need to do is to click on that button. So what is the benefit of subscribing to a channel? The benefit to subscribing to a channel is that your, um, your own channel would be fed with all the videos that from channels that you have subscribed. So they send you the information and I'm going to touch that in a little bit. Here is where you're going to use the filter again. So something maybe that is important for us to master is how am I going to filter? Am I going to filter um, by the type in this case? Yes. Why? Because something that I want to subscribe, I don't want to subscribe to a movie or a playlist. I want to subscribe to channels. So when I click on channel, it will take me to specific channels that you can actually subscribe that have any relationship to the words that I put on the search 
uh, bar. So in this case, I have Racine Unified School District. It is a channel named Racine Unified School District. Then you have other channels that somehow are related to it. So again, that's how I subscribe. Now it says that I'm already subscribed. And then remember that um, the little bell means some kind of notification so in this case we are not going to touch that because it's not necessary for um the purpose of this training all right so when i go here you're going to be able to find under your hamburger you're going to be able to find your subscriptions all the channels that you have subscribed on the past so when i do that it's going to take me to videos that are fitting from all those subscriptions that I have, different places that they go to. But you may say, okay, Natalia, I see a bunch of videos, but where are the channels that I subscribe? So again, I'm gonna go to my hamburger and I'm gonna go home right here to the bottom. And here on the bottom, you're gonna be able to find your subscriptions. Apologize again, uh, for some reason, my screen is freezing today. So I'm not able to show you the best, but I'm doing my best here. So subscriptions. So I have like different kind of subscriptions. If you guys see right here, I have like a little blue dot next to some of those subscriptions. And what that means, it means that that channel has a new video that I haven't watched yet. So those are things that maybe you want to keep on mind. Like, oh, look. Google for Education, that's a good channel to subscribe since, you know, it showed me different videos. So I can actually click there and you will be able to see um, if those new videos. There are some times where you're going to find a red, the button is going to become red with a little kind of parenthesis around. That means that that channel is broadcasting something live. So you will be able to jump on that channel to look for something uh, live. So just in case that you guys have questions about it. That's something important to remember. So two important things to remember for uh, this training is how to create playlists and manage them, and also how to subscribe to channels and um, find them on our YouTube. So that's very important. Joe, any questions? Nope, we're all good on that. Fantastic. All right. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go back to my picture on my profile. I'm going to click right there. And then something that I want to show you is your channel. So I'm going to go to my channel. And again, this is something that you do not need uh, for level one. It's just to make sure that you guys uh, know where to find stuff. So here, again, all the rows go to Rome. Oh, yeah, all the rows go to wrong. So I'm going to be able to find videos. I also going to be able to find my subscriptions. And I also going to be able to find my created playlist if I go to my channel. Customize channel and customize your YouTube studio is no part of this training since, since it's not necessary at this time. So I just want to make sure that we have that uh, clear. All right. And I think that is everything that we have for YouTube. Yep, I think we're all good. No questions on that. Um, and again, for so, some of those questions that Natalia covered earlier, if we have time at the end, we can circle back around. We just want to make sure we cover um, all of you know those targeted areas um, in our one-hour session. Um, so Shannon say, uh, do we need a channel? No, and a studio. So. Remember that there's a, the way that I'm showing you is not that you need it or don't need it, is there are different ways to access your stuff. So you can access all this, your playlist and your subscription to both, in both ways, through the channel and through the studio. So that's something that you need to remember, that you're going to be able to access everything through both, okay? All right, uh, so moving on. Naturally, I wanna, uh, make sure I have something here on my subscriptions. You're always going to be able to unsubscribe to something. So you can actually um, click that button right there and be able to unsubscribe. 
So when you go to your subscriptions, you can also unsubscribe to something. So that was something that I forgot to explain to you. All right, moving on with the second part of our training. So I'm gonna exit out of my YouTube channel. And the next thing that I'm going to do is we are going to go into the search button. So when I open a new page, and something that you guys may have no know is um, this little bar right here, we all know it as the search button, right? The URL button. Something that people don't know is that Google call it the Omnibox, O-M-I-N-I-B-O-X, Omnibox. So don't be confused when people tell and, and we as tech integrators, when we go into your classes, we most likely will call it Omnibox because we want to use those tier three words with our students. So we go to the Omnibox. So the Omnibox, again, is your URL, but also help you for searching stuff. So I don't know if you guys know, but you can type things here and actually take you to a search. So for example, if I need to find a timer, if I click there, I can find a timer for whatever. Give me options right here. Let's say a timer for five minutes. Look at what happened. Google automatically will take me to a timer. So that's a quick way to find stuff through your Omnibox. So Omnibox will help me to find address bars and URLs, but also will help me to search for items. Um, so something, we can also type different kind of things. We can say spinners. For example, I know this is one of Joe's favorite. Uh, yes, let's leave. So here is your coolest spinner. So that will be something that maybe you are able to utilize on your classroom. Like how many students? We're gonna go with two, whatever, good job. All right, and then when we are searching for something, right, now we are in the search bar. So we have the Omnibox here on the top, and then we have like the search bar on Google. So the search bar on Google, and something that my son loves to use is that you can search things by voice, so they can recognize your voice. But something that is more important than that is how to narrow my searches. So something that we are going to learn today is how to do that. So I love, um, the sample that Joe uses, uh, just because it's very um, general, I can be looking for Jaguars, right? So now, when I do that, it's gonna take me to all the things that have been searched about Jaguar, and we have 562 million results. Obviously, we do not have the time or the, capacity to go through that. So that's something that we're going to learn today, how to narrow these results. So the first thing that we are going to do is um, we're going to go to the tools. So the tools is what's going to help me. Why? Because I can narrow that search by time. You want something that is not all, something that is dated. You want results that are pretty much, you know, useful right now. And you can also change all your results to verbatim. So again, that's the two ways that you actually can change your tools and how to use it, all right? Then again, if I go to images, it's gonna take me mixed images. It's gonna say image of the animal, an image of a car. So a way to um, narrow those searches probably will be using an operator. And an operator is something that is going to help you uh, to narrow those search. For example, and then operators are something that there are massive amount of them. I like to use the simple ones, the minus, the plus. It's an operator just to add or subtract resources from there. So in this case, I love how I already used it before. So I'm going to do minus the car. What that means, I want you to show me the Jaguar, but I do not want to see cars. That's what it means. So look at what happened. 
only the picture of the animal is going to be showing right here. So that's something that can help you um, minimize your search. Now that we are in here on images, I'm going to go back to tools. This is something very important that you guys need to master, not only for a test, not only for the moment, but something that we as educators will help us um, teach and use in our classroom. When we are using images and when we are using uh, anything out of anywhere, and we always told the students, be careful with plagiarism. Do not use things that are not yours, try to use your own stuff. And we want to apply those things to ourselves. So something that is very important to know, something to master, is what can I use on a search, okay? So I go to usage rights. When I click on my usage rights, I can see that all the pictures that are here have not been filtered by license. That means I don't know which ones have copyright and which ones don't have a copyright. So something that we like to do is making sure that those pictures are labeled for reuse. I can use them on my activities, I can use it on my classroom, I can use it on my Google site, on my slides. So that's important to know. So here you see the label for reuse. Now all the ones that are here, I actually can reuse them because they are set up on that way. Okay? Uh, Joe, any question? Um, no specific questions about that. I'm just going to pop back in and kind of reiterate about the um, Omnibox. Mm -hmm. So that's if, if you're like me, the first time I heard the word Omnibox, um, I actually had to Google it because I wasn't sure what that was. So like Natalia said, I mean, where you see that, um, where Natalia typed in Jaguar minus car, that, that's the search bar. Um, the Omnibox is above that, right? It's a combination of the URL where you would type in a website and um, a search bar on Google. It's that it's that specific combination. So that's what the Omnibox is. Um, and it is um, important that you know that term. And that's why, that's why we're referencing it in this session. Fantastic. I just decided to change my cursor so it's more visible for everybody to see. So again, those are things that you can uh, find on um, Google for searching. Now, if I need to be more specific and I need uh, to know information of a certain picture, what I do is I can right click that picture and then you can go and search Google for that image. So I want to know more details about that picture. Maybe it was, where was it taking the size of that picture? Maybe I need a specific size for one of my presentations, something like that. So what I do is I click right there. Remember, I right click it. And when I did that, it's going to take me to the uh, reverse, the image reverse search in Google, where it's going to tell me where is that picture and where you can find that picture. Where are other websites where you can find the same picture that I just added right there? So again, this is important if you need to know a specific size on a picture or certain information about that picture. Something else that I want to show to you is like how to do an image search. And then in this case, I'm just going to go to google.com. Oh, yeah, if I, if I can type you guys. All right, so here I have Google. And this is the common search button where you will find different stuff. Uh, search you know, your Gmail, again, more images, you have your uh, waffle. But something I want to show you is that when I have something like this, I actually can grab an image. Like in this case, I have this image on my desktop. And I actually can grab it and bring it over here. Maybe not. Maybe it's right here. And I can search for that image. So what it's telling me is maybe where did I find that image? I maybe took that image from the internet. I forgot to uh, uh, write down 
citate where I get the image from. So that's a way that you can find it where you got it from. So maybe I got it from this website and also this is the size of the image. So that's something that you can use for um, searching. There's another way to search. All right, then uh, any other questions, Joe? Nope, we're good. All right, so we have that. Then from now, now I'm gonna start moving. So the next thing I wanna show you is how I bookmark something. So when I go, and I'm gonna go to uh, Resin Unify, and even though I already have it, um, let's go Raskits, since that was the first option. So I have Raskits, and it's something that I use often. A way to do is actually I can't, um, bookmark this page this is something very common bookmarks are little things here on the top by your bar and those are like quick access to things so if i bookmark something like in this case i'm going to uh, bookmark raskets an easy and fast way will be clicking the little star next to the url so if i go here and i click right there immediately it's going to say Rest kits, where do you want to save it? I just, I have several folders and I can show you how to create a folder. But in this case, I just want on the bookmark bar. By default, if you don't have any folders created like me, it will take you directly to the bookmark bar. So now, I have tons of bookmarks. As you can see, I have an arrow here and I also have a folder. I have different folders here. I have the Google uh, certification, RUSD, other bookmarks. And if I come here to this arrow, these are other thousand um, bookmarks that I have. So if I cannot find my rest kit, like let's say you save something and you cannot find it, a way to find it will be coming down there and you can actually drag it and put it in the place that you would like to have it. So right there. Um, that's something very important to do. Uh, how to create folders too, like or any bookmarks as well. Another way to do it, remember every time you see three dots that means that you can modify that at some point so right here on the corner my three dots means i can modify it can do something to it and as you can see i have the bookmark page right here and it will take me again to all my bookmarks that i have so that's another way and you can say bookmark this tab or you can actually bookmark them all at once Let's say that today I'm searching all about jowers and I have like a, like five pages open and I don't want to lose them because they all have like important information. So something that I can do, I can say bookmark all those pages and they actually will create a folder for you. So I can call it jower, jower search and then it will create my, um, folder for me again what is it remember it will go all the way the way to the bottom and then i can actually move it to the top if you do not want your um uh, bookmark to have like the name right there you can just bookmark a page without uh, adding words so let's say that i'm going to go again let me go to raskit I have a bookmark already. I can actually take the name and the only thing that is going to be saving, hopefully, maybe not, will be the design. I guess this one wasn't a good example because the name was part of the picture, but that's the way that it works. Another important thing that is good to know about Chrome is how to pin your tabs. Hey, Natalia. So, can yes. I interrupt for a quick, quick second? Before we go to the pinning of the tabs, can you just show, um, again, really quick, how to create a bookmark folder? There's a few people asking. Absolutely. So again, let's say I have one, two, three, four, five tabs already open, and I want to save them all, right? So, and you don't need to create a folder for those tabs. You can just create a folder and for later. So something that you do is you're going to come here to your bookmarks, on the right by the three dots, I'm gonna go to bookmarks 
And then you can actually come here and say bookmark all tabs in my um, my screen is freezing, but it's bookmark all tabs. And then it's going to take you to new folder. So you can name your folder whatever you want to. I'm going to call it Jaguar 2. Because today is another one. But you can also come to the, um, and create a new folder here. I'm going to show you a different way to. Remember, there are multiple ways to always do everything. And then I'm going to save it. Now, all those bookmarks are going to be showing on my folder. And my folder is going to be showing at the end. That was the last thing, the last bookmark I saved. So if I want it on the top, I just come and drag it to the top. So that's a way to do it. Another way to do it is coming again here, and then I'm going to go to the bookmarks, and I'm going to go to the bookmark manager. When I go to the bookmark manager, it's going to take you to all your bookmarks, and it's going to take you to your settings. So let's say that I do not want that bookmark anymore. I don't want Jaguar 2 anymore. Remember that every time you have three dots, it's something that you can do. You can either rename it, delete it, cut it, paste it, blah, blah, blah. Na you name it. So I'm going to delete it because I do not need it anymore. So that's another way to do it. Again, I have the three dots here. And when I go to the three dots, maybe I want to create a new folder for later. So I can go there, and then I'm going to name this new folder Later Work. Then I save it. Now, on my bookmark page, remember all the way to the bottom, I have my Later Work. So you will see it right here on the bottom. So those are different ways that you can actually bookmark a page multiple pages and how to create a bookmark folder all right um any other question uh no please one question was what is the name for the three dots um i just call them the three dots they are called the dotecitos just kidding. <laughs> we just call it the dots um they don't really have like a specific name it's kind of like when you see the waffle People start calling it the waffle just because it looks like a waffle. Or when you see the three lines, they call it, you know, the hamburger. Um, I know Joe was calling them the three circles yesterday. So I guess you call it whatever you want to call it, right, Joe? All right. So I'm going to move on, and I'm going to show you how to paint a tab. It's important for you to master how to paint a tab. Again, this is not only for like a day or for a specific task, it's for, important for you. Um, when you don't want to erase, because sometimes I'm right here and I'm like moving by mistake and I'm like, oh my goodness, I just erased that. Oh, what? I'm just erasing this. And now if I click here, I'm going to be out of the presentation and you guys will be like, what happened? So something that you can do is that like you step on a tab and you right click it. And when you right click it, it brings you to this behind the scenes option, giving you multiple things to do. So something that you can do is actually pin the tab. What happens when you pin the tab is that the tab is not moving. It's not going anywhere. Like I, I cannot like erase it. It will be right there for me to check up later. You can pin multiple tabs. You can do that. You can also multiply, or not multiply, duplicate a tab if you want to say it. And then it will create another tab, but it will, if I have it pinned before, it will create the second tab already pinned. So something to have in mind. Uh, any questions? Um, you are good. I'm going to uh, circle back to them. Okay. All right, so that's something to uh, keep in mind about um, a task for you uh, to learn, something to do things in your Chrome. Something else that you may see, I have a really, really, really busy page, you guys. I have usually my Omnibox. Remember, we are using that tier three word. I have my Omnibox. I have a pen, um, bookmark already. 
again here is my bookmark uh, bar but you may also see that I have a bunch of little things here on the top these little things are called extensions again extension is um, something that you need to be aware of you need to know what is an extension an extension is something that will enhance your google productivity so in this case how do i do those extensions like i have my bitmoji extension and it's probably my favorite extension because i actually can copy my bitmoji to anything i want to do like if i'm doing a presentation if i'm doing whatever so that's something that I can do. I have my drive through here, a bunch of different extensions. How do I access those? What do I do is I'm gonna go again to my three dots. And then from my three dots, I'm gonna go to more tools. The more tools are going to take me to the extensions. So for some reason, again, I'm telling you guys, it's not making it bigger right now, but extensions are right here. And then here you can see all the extensions that are already added to my, um, my page. So something to remind you, there are some extensions that were added to you by Racine Unified that you have it by default. Um, CoWriter is one of them. ClassLink is one of them. Um, ClassLink, I actually cannot turn it off uh, myself because it's a command already done by my uh, school district and then i'm going to show you why this is important to know in a little bit so when i'm here i have all these extensions um you can access the uh, chrome web store so the chrome web store is where you will be able to find those extensions and themes to change into your google so i'm going to try to move a little faster because we are running a little bit out of time um a lot of people ask questions about the Google Store. So the Chrome Web Store, um, where you do applications, is something that you may not need uh, to do at this time, since the Web Store is um, the App Store. My mistake. The App Store is for purchasing applications. If you have a Google or Android device. So you do know how, if you do not have, in my case, I don't have um, Google or Android devices, so I cannot purchase things. So that's something just to uh, clarify and to keep in mind um, because sometimes you get a lot of information, but you don't know how to filter that information. So again, it's good to know that it's a Chrome Web Store where you can get extensions and it's an app store for google where you can get applications for their devices so that's the big difference right there um i think that's pretty much about it about the chrome and the search button uh, remember that you also have the option here um to switch between accounts so if you do not know how to do that you can switch here between Google accounts. A lot of people switch in their email. I rather prefer to switch in my Chrome browser because these things will be syncing. Something important that you need to know here. When I go to my picture, my profile picture there, in my case, because I have like multiple accounts, you guys will be able to see all my accounts, but you may be asking, um where do i find my um incognito and she just closed herself out of the session so i'm going to pick up there um uh, there was a few questions as far as uh the omni box goes i'm going to really quickly present my screen all righty give me one second here Okay. So now, um, if you are able to see my screen, I'm going to just go to a new tab here. And, and the Omnibox is... <laughs> no, no worries. I just picked up real quick. So the Omnibox is something, again, this is the Omnibox. It's just a combination of the search bar and the URL. So everyone has one. 
Um, you might just not have been aware of that's what it, that that's what it was called. And then as far as the extensions go, like if they're not showing up on the top right here, um, that's just because of you know personal settings. Uh, maybe oops, excuse me. Maybe you know your address bar goes all the way over there. Um, it goes this far. So now in the top right, no extensions are showing. So to see my extensions, I would just click on these three circles, and then I would see uh, any extensions I have added. There are a few that you're going to have by default because they are managed by the district, and it's not something um, we have control over. All right, I'm going to hand it back over to Natalia as we okay, finish. I apologize, you guys. It's like I'm, I'm trying to look at the time at the same time we are doing here. Last thing that I just want to touch is how to access your incognito. So. Um, I got it right here. So again, to the three dots next to my picture, like again, I was showing you that you can access all your accounts through there, but you actually can go to your three dots right here. And next to the three dots, you're gonna find either to create a new tab, either go to a new window or a new incognito window. So what's the difference between an incognito window and a, another window? You see this like little, um, it's hard to see on the top right here. Um, this guy with the little glasses, it means that he's hiding. It's not that you're hiding anything, it's that in an incognito window, you won't have access to your um, history and you won't have access to your uh, extensions. So sometimes when you are taking, for example, a test, they ask you to go through an incognito window just because they don't want your um, extensions, and your history to be bothered with the test or the opposite, the test to be bothered with the other extensions or maybe to be um, blocked by those extensions. So that's the reason we have the incognito window where you have no history here. However, you still can see your bookmarks down here. 